Dear students, in this lecture, we shall see the applications of linear functions in economic situations. The first application is on population function. As you can see that we have taken a European population function in which the population was calculated or I should say estimated during 1960s and 1970s and their respective values are there. So let us assume that the level of population is P and the time which is the other variable is small t. Definitely the time when we started the process because it takes some time to uh, collect the data of the census and it is not going to be done instantaneously. So the beginning of the time should be considered as zero. T is equal to zero and 1960 is what represents that. T is equal to one for 1961 and this process can continue. Uh, now using that standard form of linear function that we have been studying, uh, y is equal to mx plus c, but since we are customizing it as per our variables, it should appear as the dependent variable that is population uh, in terms of the independent variable which is time along with the slope and the intercept. Now what we can uh, accumulate from the data which is given is the set of points that say that t1, p1, when time was 0, the population was 641 units. And when time was 2, that is 10, because we accumulated the data after 10 years, the population was 705 units. So these are two points that we can remember in order to calculate slope. Now, uh, we must be familiar with this formula, which is known as point-point formula of the slope of straight line. And here you can see this is that expression that has been used as slope in the previous uh, knowledge of ours. And this is y minus y1 and this is x minus x1. So this is the point point formula of, an, of uh, the standard form of a, of, a, of a straight line in which we use the slope as well as these coordinates. By putting the values, y definitely in this case is population and x is the variable known as time. We are going to put the values and the simplification will give us this expression will that further reduces to this standard form which is the standard form of a linear equation and it shows that population depends upon time. It changes over time and it has this slope and this intercept is also there. Now this can not just be um, a part of the literature without any further uh, development of uh, knowledge, we can use it in, 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 a, in a more productive way, for example, by, by backcasting or forecasting the, uh, the, uh, the level of population. That is, we can uh, see in the past or we can peep into the future that what would be the, the level of population. And that can be done simply by changing the values of, uh, of the small t, that is the independent variable that is time. Uh, in this table that you, you, you can see, uh, t is assumed to be in years and yes, uh, we are trying to backcast and forecast in these two cases um, because we have the data of 1960 and 1970. So back, for backcasting we'll go 30 years back from 1960s and that will make the variable t as minus 30. And when we go 15 years ahead, we get 1975. And when we go 40 years ahead, we get year 2000. And once we put this value, this small t, into this function that we have just obtained, we shall get the values of t, uh, value of population, uh, which is basically telling us that in past, the population could be this, or in the future, in 1975 and in year 2000, the population could be this. But again, a caveat is there. We cannot totally rely on these estimates because these are estimates. And future by its very nature is uncertain because there are other factors as well that might affect the population which are not known to us at this point in time. However, we have given a decent 
uh, estimate of the back caste and forecast caste of the population. Now consumption function is the other function that we shall be uh, trying to understand using the linear functions. And that was by this individual who used this data of uh, 1929 uh, to 1941 of US economy. And he came up with this model, this linear function of consumption. Um, all of you know that this is the slope, mathematically speaking, but in economic sense, it is the marginal propensity to consume. And that is very important for us even to understand the business cycles. Uh, but at this time, what we can see is that slope is helping us. Slope of a linear function is actually helping us. And C0 is the autonomous part of the consumption, which has its own economic importance. And uh, geometrically, it shows the intercept of the linear function, as you will see in the diagram, that it actually represents the intercept at uh, y-axis. Now, the value of MPC in the last example was 0 0.712. And that can be interpreted in a way that 71.2% of the increase in the income is likely to be spent in the form of consumption. And the remaining is definitely uh, in, in, the, in the form of uh, savings. So MPC, again uh, speaking geometrically, is actually the slope of a linear function. And it has helped us to understand the economic phenomenon.